All right, so now we are, uh, we've just defined the property and the section. So we need to move on to the next module. The next module is going to be an assembly. An assembly is a collection of several parts. This model has only one part. So I'll go ahead and define it as independent mesh on instance. This is the only part that needs to be included. So the assembly step was very straightforward. It's also showing you the XY coordinate system, which I think is pretty helpful. The next is going to be the analysis step. And for that, this is a very simple model. So we're going to say, create the first step number one. And there are quite a few options that are available. You can have a general procedure. You can have a linear perturbation. You just want to go with the general procedure for now. And there are several options. But Abacus has sort of figured out what you're trying to do by now. It has selected the static general, which is the simplest uh, analysis model. We can continue with that. That's We're going to be doing a static analysis of the general type. And uh, this is just a shear wall analysis. The time period has no meaning. It's going to be a static analysis. So you'll just leave it at one. This flag NL, nonlinear geometry. Remember this flag, it's equal to off right now. And we'll talk about what switching this on means. Uh, switching it on is <laughs> part of a completely different course. The course on structural stability is where it is on all the time. And we'll talk about structural stability a little bit later. If you want to do any sort of buckling analysis, you would need to switch it on. But right now, we're doing simple first order linear elastic analysis. So NLGUM will stay it off. Um, incrementation is sort of automatic. We don't have to worry about that um, and so on. So we don't have to worry about any of these options. We can just click OK and the step has been created. It's going to be the first step of the analysis. Now, before I leave this window, I want to make sure that it's going to save the output that I want. So it has already created a default output step. Now, the options are for me to drill down into each of these and make sure that all the right stresses have been uh, is, are going to be output. Right now, all the stresses are going to be output, but there are several of them that are not going to be output, as you can see. Similarly, for the strains, it, it has gone in and figured out what it needs to save and what it doesn't need to save. Now, what we can do is we can think about all of these options. We can say, all right, I want to save the Mises stress. I want to save the von Mises maximum stress. I want to save the transverse shear stress, but this is for thick shells. It's a 2D model. We won't have to worry about that and so on. So we can go in and click all of them individually, or we can just click them all on and whatever doesn't apply to us will sort of stay blank in the, in the output field and we won't have to worry about it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to select everything. Make sure you select all the forces and reactions because that's where you're going to get all the reaction forces. Contact, there's no contact in this model, so we leave it alone. I don't need the energy and so on. <clears throat> you can also have some options for output for rebar and output for shell and beam elements. We'll talk about that when we get to beam elements. Right now, we'll just say use defaults and that should be good enough, okay? So we've made sure that all the results that the analysis generates will be saved.